hey guys <clears throat> i hope that i'm live right now if you guys are able to see the screen as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video please let me know hello everyone i hope that i'm live right now if you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video please let me know fine great how are you guys how are you guys good evening everybody good evening good evening good evening how are you guys how was your day Link. Okay. Ah, uh, good evening, sir. Everything's fine. How are you? I am also fine. Thank you so much for asking, Renuka. Ah, uh, great, fabulous. That's great, Muhammad Razak. Okay. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Muhammad Razak is a name that uh, I've started remembering. I don't know why, but I see him every day in my class. Okay. Ah. Uh, Tirth uh, Jyotikar, sir, please postpone the class tomorrow. I have plans for Python class. I cannot do that, Jyotikar, because I too have plans for uh, tomorrow. So why did you change the time? Uh, many of you guys were saying to me that uh, change the time, change the time. So I thought that uh, I have just one boot camp right now. So uh, that is the reason why I changed the time to 7:30 to 8. Sorry, 7:30 to 9 or something like that. Can you tell the answer of yesterday's uh, question? Uh, could you tell me, Jatin, what was yesterday's question? Uh, the project link provided in today's JavaScript bootcamp description is not working. What can I do? Uh, for right now, either you can uh, create like I have told you guys how to uh, create a basic setup for React. Okay, on the first day when you're uh, learning React, so you can uh, do that. Or else, by after this particular class, I will take fifteen to twenty minutes, and I am going to recreate that. So I got to know about it right now. So I was just checking it, and it was not working. So I will recreate it uh, after this particular class itself. You don't have to worry about it. Okay? It will take me some time. It will take me like five to ten minutes after this boot camp, and we'll do it. Okay? Titanic example. Okay. So the the answer is Titanic death. Uh, people have already provided the answer. That's great. Can you tell us? Uh, So can you please tell us when we learn main concept of uh, Python? Uh, never, because uh, this boot camp is basically just basics of Python, so that we are able to start with deep learning. Uh, we have our Python boot camp where we go in depth in Python, and in the future we will have a proper like just like C plus plus and Java we have already provided to you guys for free. Similar to that, we will be having a Python uh, program as well. We'll be covering everything that you need to learn in Python, so you don't have to worry about it. Then is it compulsory to learn C before C plus plus? Never, never. I never ever learned C plus uh, C up till now. Like I know C plus plus, I know Java, I know Python, JavaScript. I've never learned C. Okay, not even in college. Okay, in college we had COVID. In COVID we didn't give a uh, shit about what is going in the class itself. And uh, nevertheless, I was the kind of a backbencher who never paid attention to the class, and I never got good marks as well. But nevertheless, like uh, I never learned C, so that myth that you have to learn C before C plus plus is uh, total bullshit. Okay, you don't have to worry about it. So I got all the certificates of Python beginners. Thanks. Oh, uh, that's great, Revenger Gamer. Okay, I love your name, but I don't know why you have uh, put up that name. Okay. Uh, good evening, sir. Please give us a little bit early update about the uh, class daily. Uh, sure, Abdul. I will definitely try. Like I said, we only have six people working in Dev Town. Okay, we don't have a very large team because we are a non-profit organization. We cannot hire people. So due to that reason, like we are short on the team itself, but we will definitely try our best to make sure that uh, your uh, feedback is something that uh, we will definitely consider moving further. So which language is most important language C or Python first of all C is not a good language to learn at all okay it's just for your college examinations itself from a practical standpoint if you want to do data structures and algorithms and computer programming choose between C++ and Java okay choose between these languages if you want to become a data scientist data analyst data engineer then choose uh, Python as your uh, development language of choice make projects in Python 
we want to become a web developer front end back end uh, cloud devops whatever web developer that you want to become then choose javascript as your development language of choice okay that is my particular uh, suggestion to you guys how are you feeling today thank you so much for asking i am good like still a bit of weakness is there because i've just recovered uh i want to start gym but uh, it has been three years since i've visited gym as well uh, so let's see how that goes on as well okay so please show us your resume as a pressure uh, Niv, uh shivam nabhara I don't have my uh, like resume as a fresher, but one of the resumes that I have, okay, one of the resumes that I have of mine, I can show you that. Would you like to see? Please do let me know. It's not my resume as a fresher, like uh, not exactly as a fresher, but uh, means I was a fresher back then as well, but I was a shitty fresher, like when I had no understanding about how to make a resume and all those kind of stuff. I have that resume with me. I can point out the mistakes that I've made in my resume to you guys so that you don't do the exact same mistakes. So, okay, sure. I will show it to you guys then. Uh, like I said, guys, this syllabus is a shitty syllabus. Oh, sorry, shitty uh, resume. Okay. It's not a resume that I use right now or even when I was searching for companies. I will point out the mistakes that I have done in this resume if you guys want. Let me search for it. Give me a second, guys. Okay, like I said, this is an example resume that I had created uh, for uh, showing to classes itself. As you're able to see, it's the first biggest mistake that I've done in the entire resume is adding color to it. Okay, adding color to it. Please never add color to your resume. It should be black, white and grey. No other color should be there on your resume. So that was my first biggest mistake. Okay, I had no idea about it. So that mistake costed me a lot. Okay, so first mistake was adding colors to my resume. Rest, it is simple enough. I don't have any pictures on my resume or something like that. Start with Shorasana, software engineer. Okay, whatever position that you are currently working as. Uh, what other different like uh, github you are having uh, I'm having my phone number my email address that I put up right over here some uh, basic information about what I have done up till now some achievements that are there related to the uh, program or related to the position that I'm applying to some basic information that is there related to uh, my education some experiences that I had I had till that really point of time so you have to mention that as well uh, once that is done, then uh, some projects that you have done. So my major project that I had completed was the disaster query classification. I think so I have told you guys about it as well. So the disaster query management was basically like uh, whenever a disaster is struck, there are different uh, departments that handle different stuff. For example, one department is just for injured people. One department is just for uh, food related issues. One department is for water related issues, clothes related issues and so on and so forth. I created a uh, application using ReactJS, Django, uh, ETL pipelining, AWS, wherein a particular person can go to that website, put his uh, his problem right over there. For example, I'm having a shortage of water and one of my friends has got injured in his knee and that message will immediately be classified into 12 different categories, 10 different categories that is like food, water, medical and that query would then be sent along with his location, his exact precise location to the department which can handle that particular problem along with that like i said i was a lot into data science so i had almost 200 different projects in machine learning deep learning ai and deployment even now as well i think so this link is something that i have uh i don't know if it will work or not i have no idea it has been a very long period of time since i've uh, opened it up so as you're able to see this is one of my uh like uh, github accounts okay Tora BID to get 18. You can go through all these uh, projects that I've made. Okay, uh, in the past, like it took me two years to complete it, and uh, as you are able to see, it was completed three years ago. So it has been five years since these projects were made. But I have almost 200 projects related to machine learning, deep learning, deployment, uh, and other stuff as well uh, related to data science. That you can go through this. For example, in artificial intelligence, I have some projects right over here. 
I have more number of projects in ML revision that I was doing. So that is just one project right over here. Then I think so machine learning projects, uh, computer vision based projects, Coursera, machine learning, MATLAB, machine learning, uh, uh, like separated it into different categories as well. So CNN, churn, ANN, K means clustering. Each of them has uh, one or two projects inside of them. So uh, that is the entire stuff that I'd created. So I put it up on my resume as well. But there were some, and this is my new resume that I've created for uh, colleges and companies for in on behalf of DevTown. So because uh, as DevTown is an institution and we have to represent ourselves to different companies and colleges. So for that, this is another resume that I've created uh, for them. So that's the point guys, you have to like, um, learn trial and error method but some of the stuff that i've been telling you're telling you guys you have to work upon that as well okay okay are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys uh so do you see django also maybe in the future i might have one more boot camp on django but right now in this boot camp of course it won't be possible Okay, great. Sure, of course, there will be future boot camps on Python as well. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, so let's get started, guys, with today's class. Um, okay, so can you guys let me know what have we studied in our previous class, guys? Can you guys let me know what have we studied in our previous class? The main question Jatin is that why have you marked uh, the uh, answer wrong? Okay, first of all, I need to know that. Why have you marked the answer wrong? So can you kindly reply? Uh, I got the certificate from DevTown for Python for beginners, but didn't get the Google and Microsoft server. Uh, have you submitted the uh, project uh, properly? Jose, have you submitted the project properly? Please do let me know. Also in the project uh, submission form, have you used the exact same email that you have used in your attendance? If there is any mismatch in the emails as well, you will not get the certificates. Okay, so neural networks, activation function. Okay, we have completed activation function. Titanic death was the example that we were using. Good. Okay. Uh, Dipton, I couldn't see any questions for yesterday's attendance, so I didn't answer. What should I do? Uh, there's nothing that you can do. If you, How can you not see the question, man? Like, it was there. Like, how can you not see a question? Okay. Okay, so let me do one thing. Let me open up the PDF once again for you guys. Give me a second, guys. So neural networks, that was the PDF. Uh, let me open it up with uh, our edge so that I'm able to do some stuff on this. Okay. So uh, let's try to understand some more stuff right over here. Okay, one more thing, guys. Uh, like I have a proper like thing for you. So your uh, project, okay, uh, will be taken up by another mentor. Uh, who will be teaching you everything related to machine learning and deep learning from scratch in a very lot of depth as well as well as he will be doing the project for you guys that mentor has previously worked in companies like HP, Porsche uh, he has worked in uh, Google, he has worked in um, Instamojo so there's a lot of different companies that he has previously I don't think so it is Instamojo, it is something like that okay that's the name of the company but uh, yeah so he's an experienced person, okay, with almost five to six years of experience in data science as well. So I've decided that, okay, whatever I'm able to tell you guys, that's good enough for you, but I want you guys to meet new mentors and to learn from them as well. So I've decided that the project I will be assigning Sahil Rahman to take up the project so that you guys are able to meet a new mentor uh, who are in uh, DevTown as well, okay? He's a great person. I hope that you are able to understand it. Okay. So let's get started guys. Uh, okay. So now there are multiple things that you can do using deep learning. Okay. There are multiple things that you can do using deep learning at any point of time guys. Okay. So, uh, for example, right over here, you are having the first task is classification. Okay. You can classify stuff into categories. Okay. For example, you can take in the input as humidity and pressure. Okay. What is the current humidity of the air and what is the pressure at where you are standing? I'm predict okay and predict will it rain or not okay so basically you're classifying okay that will it rain or will it not rain okay you can take in pictures of animals okay you can take in pictures of animals itself okay 
and take in pictures of animals and classify it within it is a cat or a dog okay, so all these you can do using your uh, deep learning okay using deep learning you can do classification of various stuff the next particular example is regression okay for example let's uh, assume that you are having an advertising budget okay your advertising budget is of 2 lakh rupees per month okay 2 lakh rupees per month okay and uh, your webinars okay you are also organizing webinars uh, let's assume that you are organizing uh, 300 webinars per month Okay, you are organizing 300 webinars per month. So on the basis of how much you are spending on advertisements and how many webinars you are able to take, you can predict the sales, okay, the amount of sales that is there. For example, that will generate almost $1 lakh dollar of sales. Okay, that will all generate almost $1 lakh dollars of sales. So that is called as regression. Okay, for example, predicting sales on the basis of advertisement and webinar, predicting the price of a house on the basis of uh, your uh, number of uh, rooms in a particular house and its location. So all these different stuff is something that you will be uh, telling as regression based problems. Okay, regression based problems. The next particular thing is complex neural networks. Okay, so up till now you have just seen one neuron that was working. Okay, just one neuron that was there. It takes in two inputs and provides you an output at the end. That's it. That is what you have seen up till now. Does your brain only has one particular uh, neuron? Okay, does your brain only has one particular neuron? Please do let me know guys. Does your brain only has one particular neuron? Please do let me know guys. No, exactly. You have like billions and trillions of neurons in your brain. Okay, connected to each other, firing each other, activating each other, so on and so forth. So, we what was our aim our aim was to model the brain itself our aim was to model the brain similar to that up till now what we were studying was just neurons now what we are going to look at is a neural network okay a neural network so neural network works in such a way okay you are having a layer of neurons you're having a layer of neurons right over here it is not compulsory that a neuron will only take okay let's first before doing this let's first understand something it is not compulsory that a neuron is going to take in only one input okay nobody said that that your neuron can only take in two inputs a neuron can take in let's say three inputs as well so you are having a neuron that takes in three inputs so what will be the equation uh, uh, of this particular neuron okay what will be the equation linear equation in three variables guys okay a neuron is able to take in three inputs so what will be the equation? What will be the uh, linear equation in three variables, guys? What will be the linear equation in three variables? Can somebody let me know? What is the linear equation in three variables, guys? Please do let me know. So for those who are having problems in uh, opening the JavaScript project, I got to know it right now itself. Do not worry. After this class, I will be updating it once again. But Nevertheless, I have told you guys how to create the basic structure, file structure of to start a project in React. When we were learning React, so you can start it from right over there as well. Exactly, guys. So our will be ax1 plus bx2 plus cx3 plus d is equals to zero. So that is what we have learned. Ax plus by plus cz is equals uh, plus d is equals to zero okay and writing it in terms of weights and inputs so w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus w3 x3 uh, plus w0 is equals to zero that is the equation that you will be having okay so it you have not limited okay a neuron can take in hundreds of inputs okay if it is saying 100 inputs in a neuron then it will be a linear equation of 100 variables okay it will be a linear equation of 100 variable guys are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please do let me know great so similarly right over here as well you are having a layer of neurons okay you are having a layer of neurons now let's assume that this uh neural network takes in uh uh five inputs or uh, four inputs okay so x1 x2 x3 and x4 these are the four inputs that this neural network can take 
so every neuron okay every neuron will take in the first input as x1 okay let's draw these lines every neuron is able to take in the first input as x1 every neuron every uh, neuron is able to take in the second input as x2 The neuron is able to take in the third input as x3. Let me take up some other color. And every neuron is able to take in the fourth uh, input as, uh, let's assume uh, some other color. Take up uh, yellow. so every neuron as you are able to see is taking in, in four inputs every neuron okay x1 x2 x3 x4 every neuron is creating a particular equation that is a well, g of a x1 plus b x2 plus c x3 plus d x4 plus e okay is equal to zero that is the equation that every single neuron is creating and that is the output that each of these neurons are giving okay that is some activation function of uh, the inputs that are there okay uh, the weighted linear equation in four variables now that outputs okay that outputs are now the input for the last output neuron okay so there is one more output neuron that is the output that you want to get okay this is the last neuron that is there and all these outputs okay what are these outputs the outputs for every one of them is g of uh, w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus w3 x3 plus w4 x4 plus w0 that is the uh, output of each of these neurons each of these neurons this is the output okay and that output is getting fed as the input to this particular neuron this output is getting fed as an input to this particular last neuron as you are able to see right over here and all these inputs again okay all this entire thing okay this entire thing is getting fed as an input right over here and that again is doing a computation and an uh, activation function and that is producing you the final result okay that is producing you the final result this is referred to as a neural network okay a neural network okay this is referred to as a neural network are you guys able to understand what a neural network is please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand what a neural network is please do let me know guys Bharti Bhokar and it's Python. Uh, we send certificates in batches. So if you still not receive the certificate, it, you will receive it within the week itself. It takes time to send all the certificates. We don't send it at once. Okay, we send it in batches. Okay. Great. So that is called as a complex neural network. Okay. Amazing guys. Amazing. Now, what is a deep neural network? Okay, complex neural networks, as you're able to see how much mathematics is there. Okay, up till here maybe you can do the mathematics that is required maybe maybe you can do this mathematics that is required okay but but according but according to deep neural networks okay what will happen is you don't have just one neural network okay you don't have just one neuron layer okay there are multiple neuron layers that are there for example this is the first neural uh, layer okay is the second neural layer this is the third neural layer this is the fourth neural layer and this is the uh, output okay and here you are having the inputs let's assume x1 and x2 these are the inputs right over here uh, these are the inputs right over here. So let's assume that you are drawing the uh, input uh, right over here. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Then you are having your uh, red color. I will take it up right over here. This is the next particular one. Then you are having the color. Let's just change the color. Now these, uh, this is getting, okay. This is generating a G of 
ओके दिस इज जनरेटिंग अ जी ऑफ ए एक्स डब्ल्यू वन एक्स वन प्लस डब्ल्यू टू एक्स टू प्लस डब्ल्यू नॉट ओके दिस इज वॉट इट इज जनरेटिंग एंड दैट जनरेशन ओके एंड दैट जनरेशन इज गोइंग टू एवरी सिंगल अदर न्यूरो दैट आउटपुट इज द इनपुट फ्रॉम द नेक्स्ट पर्टिकुलर न्यूरो ऑन इट सेल्फ लेयर ऑफ न्यूरो सो यू कैन इजली अंडरस्टैंड ओके You can easily understand how complex this entire network would be, and how complex mathematical equations will this uh, network create. Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know, guys. Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know. How complex? So this is called as deep neural networks. Why deep neural networks, guys? Because The there are multiple layers of neurons right over there. Okay, there are multiple layers of neurons right over there. So each of these layers, okay, although I have not drawn a lot of uh, like uh, elements, okay, I have not drawn a lot of neurons, but each of these layers usually have five hundred and twelve to one uh, hundred and one zero to four to. Two zero uh, four eight. Okay, these many neurons in every single layer. Okay, so one twenty eight. And as you are able to see, all these are to the power n. Okay, all these are to the power n. Why the number of neurons? Okay, why the number of neurons in every single layer is usually put up as two to the power n, guys? Because you are dealing with binary numbers. Okay, now as the number of neurons are two to the power n, that means it can easily be represented in the binary form and because there are so many mathematical equations and mathematical computations that are currently going on it makes your code work a lot more faster and optimized for your computer so the number of neurons in each of these layers are usually like 1024 2048 512 128 so all these like as you are able to see the, the, it will create such a complex and such a huge deep neural networks and usually uh, and usually because i have only drawn four neural networks usually there are like 100 200 neural networks as well in each of these uh, like networks so that is how complicated the entire things becomes although you are able to understand how a normal neuron works but to put up the mathematical equation and mathematical formulation for this neural network as well it is impossible it is impossible but to understand the basics is something that you need to understand because we would we talked about the a single neuron because we under, we wanted to understand the entire neural network like how does it work in the uh, background as well are you guys able to understand deep neural networks please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand these yeah, these are also known as hidden layers okay these neural uh, layers each of these neural layers are uh, are also referred to as hidden layers as well okay Are you guys able to understand how a neural network looks like? Okay, I told you some basic stuff right over here to make you guys understand as much as possible. But of course, in while doing the project, we will be diving a lot more de in depth for the entire thing. Okay, right now I'm just giving you a feels for it. Okay, so that sometimes you need to get a feel of the stuff so that when you are diving deep into understanding concepts, you are able to. You are able to get some air. Okay, okay. Hawa lag raha hai tumhe. Okay, you are able to understand a little bit of what is happening around you because you know the basics. Okay, because you know the basics. Okay. Uh, this boot camp will complete in exact seven days. Yes, Bhumi ka. I cannot extend it more than that. It will complete in exact seven days. a uh, flappy bird game uses ml or dl to complete automatically uh, so there are two possibilities in that what i will suggest would be for completing so for example if you want to create an ai that is able to compete in a game itself you will usually use uh, uh, let me just think about it i usually forget the name of that particular thing is there uh its name starts with an r something learning uh semi supervised and supervised maybe uh 
I forgot the name. Uh, let me just check. Uh, reinforcement yeah that is the name reinforcement learning usually when you are dealing with games okay when you want to create an ai that is able to compete in a game itself then you will be able to use reinforcement learning so how does a reinforcement learning work guys it's a bit different from a normal learning algorithm so what happens is uh, in reinforcement learning you are having a particular uh, let's assume the model okay so let's assume you are having a puppy It looks like a dinosaur, but just assume that it's a puppy itself. Okay. So whatever this is, okay, some animal that you're having as a pet and uh, this is you. Okay. This is the trainer. Okay. This is me right over here. Okay. So, um, okay. So this is me. This is my uh, pet. Uh, it is at my home itself. Okay. So this is my home right over here. Let's assume that this is my home and my home will be called as the environment uh, my pet will be called as the agent okay and uh, so i will be telling uh, my particular pet that okay sit okay i've just bought this particular pet right now i just bought this particular pet right now so see picasso also used to draw like that and his uh, art was sold for millions maybe someday my art will also sell for millions maybe <laughs> okay that's that's uh, that's awesome man so um uh, so what you will do is you have bought a new pet and you will try to teach that pet itself you will say that okay pet sit okay whatever the name of the pet is let's assume that's uh suzy suzy is my golden retriever so let's assume that i'm telling suzy to sit now suzy has heard about sit for the very first time now the role of the agent okay the aim of the agent is to maximize the amount of scooby biscuits that it can get okay the uh, so that is the hypothesis uh, so uh, sorry that is the aim of the agent okay the goal of the agent is to maximize these scooby biscuits that it can get so this is scooby biscuit and its aim is to maximize the uh, scooby biscuits that uh, the uh, agent can get so now every time it does something that i want it to do i'll give him a i'll give suzy a scooby biscuit so i'll ask her to sit okay i'll ask uh, suzy to sit now suzy will be like she doesn't know so she will jump okay suzy will jump okay now i will say to him bad dog okay i will say to him bad dog I'll say to him bad dog but also i'm giving a negative okay i'm giving a negative answer or a negative response to the agent i'm giving a negative response to the agent the agent is not able to get the bone itself the scooby biscuit now again i will say suzy sit and this time suzy sits okay so i give her a scooby biscuit okay i give her a scooby biscuit that very good dog get a scooby biscuit okay i gave her an incentive a positive feedback i gave her a positive feedback itself now according to suzy what happened right over here suzy will create a hypothesis okay suzy will create a hypothesis that every time that i sit every time that i sit i get a scooby biscuit this is not true okay this is not true but this is the hypothesis that suji has created for herself okay so now next time i say jump okay i say suji jump so according to the hypothesis the aim of uh, suji is to maximize the number of scooby biscuits that she can get and the hypothesis that she has created for achieving that is that whatever this human says if i just sit i will get a scooby biscuit so now when i am asking her to jump she is uh, she sits okay so i scold her okay i gave her a negative feedback then bad dog now that hypothesis has been broken uh, has broke okay the hypothesis has broke so now again suzy will be like hey, dude i need to create a new hypothesis so she will roll around i will say bad dog she will jump and i will give her a scooby biscuit so now she will create a new hypothesis okay that okay if he says sit if i do this if i sit i will get a scooby biscuit if he says jump i do this i jump i will get a scooby biscuit okay so that is how this agent works now this hypothesis creation is basically a mathematical formula okay it's basically a very huge mathematical formula that happens and that is how these agents learn okay all your robots that you see right now okay maybe you have seen the boston dynamics dog that they have created that can walk 
around the Asimo, the robot that Honda created that can walk like a normal human being, like a uh, humanoid human being itself. There are Tesla cars as well. So it isn't practical to create a robot or to create a car and to test it out in the real environment. Okay, it will crash a million times before it is able to learn something. You cannot burn that amount of money. So for that reason, what happens is these people create a simulated environment inside of the computer with all the properties of the physical world and there it uses, they use the reinforcement learning to help the computer, help the cars, still driving cars, help the uh, robots and everything to learn right over there. Once they have learned in the simulated environment, then they use that particular learning, that would be a model into a real car and then test it out in the real world itself. Okay, so that is how this reinforcement learning works. Okay, now this reinforcement learning takes in, okay, takes in all the attributes from deep learning as well. So the agent that you have created right over here, this agent, okay, this agent is nothing else but a deep learning model. Okay, this agent is nothing else but a deep learning model and this process is called as reinforcement learning. This is called as reinforcement learning, okay. Similar to that, we have supervised and semi-supervised and unsupervised learning models as well. Okay, so there are multiple models that are there, but one of the questions that you guys have asked, so according to that, this is the answer I wanted to give. Okay, are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know guys. Sorry. Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know. Internship program classes will be only for five or a full week, uh, sir. Uh, Teja, that depends upon the instructor. Usually it is five to six days a week. Okay. See, reinforcement learning is a huge deal. Okay. Uh, see, again, I'm telling you, reinforcement learning will not get you jobs. Okay. It's a research field. It's not for job purpose. Okay. This particular topic reinforcement learning is not for job purpose. It's a uh, research field. For example, right now I am studying about reinforcement learning in my free time, not from the perspective of career. Nobody is going to give me a job in India for related to reinforcement learning because there are none. Okay. There are no jobs in reinforcement learning in India, but still it's a very interesting field and I like about it and research papers in these fields are something so for those who are planning to go for masters. Okay. If you are planning to go outside India, okay, for masters in some great colleges or universities or something like that, for example, Ivy League college or something, then yes, reinforcement learning is something that I will suggest you guys to start learning about. You can create uh, like good research papers very easily and you will be easily able to get selected in one of the Ivy League colleges as well. If you are having good GRE, GMAT, good uh, LORs and everything. And there you will easily be able to get a very high paying job in reinforcement learning. But for India, it's, it's just not possible. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's feed forward a uh, neural network. Okay. Neural networks has connections only in one direction. As you are able to see right over here, these connections are only in one direction. That is the inputs are propagated only further. Okay. It's not received back. It's only propagated further from right over here. These are not like outputs say we are getting something back. Okay. Output say we are not getting anything back. It's always just feed forward. It's just going in the one direction itself. It's just going into one direction itself. Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know guys. <coughs> So that the inputs move from the input to the hidden layers and then to the output. They are, they only propagate into one direction. That is, they will start at the input. They will go to the hidden layers. That is the network that you have created and they will go towards the output after that. Okay. Now the next particular thing that we need to understand is how does this particular entire thing learn? Okay. How does this entire thing function? Okay. How does the uh, model. Okay. Now we have understood that, okay, there's a model that is called as deep learning model, but how does the model learn? Okay. We don't know that yet. Okay. We are just passing in inputs. We're getting an output, but how does it learn at the end of the day? There we need to learn something about uh, supervised uh, machine learning models. Okay. So let's assume, okay. How many of you have seen three idiots? How many of you have seen three idiot guys? Please do let me know.
can you guys let me know uh, how many of you uh, have seen three idiots because i am going to use its example okay so if you have not seen three idiots uh, it would be very difficult for me to make you guys understand i want it to be interesting for you guys ki like you, at once you are able to understand everything okay great so almost every one of you have seen three idiots that's that's easier for me to do it as well okay so let's uh, try to understand this so what happens is let's assume that uh, there uh, there are three students in a particular class okay you are having uh, faran qureshi okay i can uh, the spelling i it can be very wrong but just i hope that you guys are able to understand f a h a r a n so you are having faran qureshi you are having chatur uh, right over here the silencer chatur and then you are having uh, um, what was the name of the protagonist ranchor das tamdas khachad what was his name what was the name of the ranchor das tamdas khachad what was his uh, like first name okay, have you guys do you guys remember it what was the first uh, name of ranchor das tamdas khachad okay, i have forgotten the first name of uh, that real person okay i don't uh, immediately i forgot about it Punso Rancho, okay. So R A N C H O. So there are three students in a particular class. Okay, Paran Kureshi, Chatur Ramalingam, and Rancho uh, Rancho Jha Shamala Chachar. Okay, or Punso Kwangdu. So what happens is, uh, let's also uh, I'll just draw these people out as well. So he is wearing specs. He is like uh, these and uh, dot dot. And then you are having Rancho, and Rancho is like he is having spikes and everything and. So now let's assume that you are having these guys have enrolled into the same college. Okay, IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay. Okay, so they have enrolled into the same college itself. So let's assume that uh, how will they learn? Okay, so you have you are the teacher. You have thought about creating a learning path for them. So of course, uh, when you are in uh, school or when you are in college itself, you have something called as guide books. Okay, are you guys familiar with uh, guide books itself? Please do let me know, guys. Are you guys familiar with guide books? Please do let me know. So let's assume that we are virus, okay? But we are good virus, okay? We are virus, but we are good virus, okay? Let's so this is virus, but we are a good virus, okay? We are not bad virus, okay? So we want to make these three students learn, okay? So our virus has a particular book, okay? That is the guide book. Let's assume that this is the guide book. This guide book has, uh, let's assume, five hundred questions. Okay, it has five hundred questions as well as the answers. So guide books work in like that itself. A uh, subject guide book is there. Inside the guide book, there will be like question answer, question answer, question answer, question answer, and so on and so forth. Now what uh, he has done is he has divided this book into two parts. Okay, he has divided this book into two parts itself. One is the four fifty questions and answers, and the other one has just fifty questions and answers. Okay. So he just took the book, he tore it off, and one of the half has four fifty questions and answers, and the one has just fifty questions and answers itself. Now this four fifty questions and answers, he is providing these three students, each one of them, with these four fifty questions and answers itself. This fifty questions and answers, he is keeping it safe with Priya. Okay, he is keeping it safe with Priya. Priya is told Priya that don't give it to anybody. And these four fifty questions and answers, he has distributed it with Faran, Chatur, and Rancho. Now, according to you, what will Faran, Chatur, and Rancho do with these four fifty question and answers? Okay, with these four, they have to prepare for a test. Okay, at the end of it, there is going to be a test, and according to this test, they are going to get the uh, like internships. They are going to get the internships according to this test itself. So now, these four fifty question and answers, they have given it to Faran, uh, Chatur, and Rancho the same particular question and answers. Now. What will Faran do? Faran will open up that particular book. He will just flip to the pages. Okay, he is not interested to study. He is not interested to study. Study. He is interested in photography. Okay, he is not at all interested to study. So he will just flip through the pages. I okay, okay, ha ha, ठीक है, ठीक है. Okay, it's done, it's done. And he will just throw off the book. Okay, that's it. हो गया. I'm ready to give the test. Okay. So how do you think will Farhan uh, function? Okay, now before the test itself, virus wants to check because this is an internship test. It is taken up by Google. 
Okay, this test is taken up by Google itself. Before giving this test, uh, virus again. Okay, so we'll draw virus once again. So this is our virus. Virus takes that 50 questions and answers which these students haven't seen. Okay, virus takes that these 50 and question and answers and creates a uh, institute test out of it. Okay, a pre-test. Okay, a pre-test. Before giving the final test, you have to give this pre-test and check whether you are performing well or not. So how do you think Farhan will do on this pre-test and how do you think Farhan will do on this final test? Okay, Farhan just flipped through those 450 questions. Okay, Farhan just flipped through those 450 questions. He has not read it, he has, he has read it but he has not understood anything, he has not memorized anything, that's it. Okay, so how do you think Farhan will do on the pre-test and the final test guys? Please do let me know. How will he do on the pre-test and the final test? And guys, let me know. So the best answer that I'm able to get is uh, chess play and learn has given me the best answer, I guess. First from last. Okay, that is how we will do. Okay, first from last. He will fail in both the examinations. Paran will fail in the pre-test as well as well as in the final test. Okay, so PT and FT. He will fail in both pre-test and final test. Now, Chatur has also been given the exact 450 question and answers. Chatur has also been given the exact 450 question and answers itself. Now, what will Chatur do with these 450 question and answers? Okay, Chatur will wrote learn it. He will memorize it. He will not try to understand anything. He will not try to understand anything. He will just wrote learn the entire stuff itself. Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know. He will cram exactly Rishabh. Okay, he will just cram, he will just uh, wrote learn it, he will just memorize it, he will not understand anything. Am I right or wrong guys? Please do let me know. We will just wrote learn everything. Now if the same question comes in pre-test and final test, if the exact same question comes in pre-test and final test, he will do well in that particular question. But if the question is changed, okay, if the question is changed a bit as well, he will fail miserably. So in the guide test, he will do good. Okay, he will do around 80%. Okay, in the guide test, in the uh, pre-test. Okay, in the pre-test, because some of the questions, these 50 questions that will be given to him will be a lot similar to what the guidebook was offering. So he will do good in that particular pre-test. But when it comes to final test, he will fail miserably. Okay, he will fail miserably in the final test because the final test is made by Google. It's not made by that particular person itself, that particular guidebook owner itself. So it will fail miserably in the final test. Okay. So that is the problem with Chatur. Now, the next particular person is Rancho. Rancho also has that exact 450 question and answers. Okay. Rancho has all those 450 question and answers. Okay. But he doesn't memorize. He doesn't skip through anything. He tries to understand everything. Okay. He tries to understand everything. Okay. So although, so if he has understood everything, he's tried to uh, like just absorb everything that was there in the book, gain knowledge from the book itself. So when he goes to the pre-test, maybe he has scored less than Chatur. Okay. Maybe he will score less than Chatur, but he will do great in the final test. Okay. But Tranchu will do great in the final test itself. Okay. So the exact same thing happens with your models. Okay. With your uh, deep learning models as well. So in deep learning models as well, this particular 500, uh, 450 question and answers is called as training data set. Okay, it's called as training data. Let me just change the color so that it's easy for you guys to see and understand as well. Change the color to red. So this 450 question and answers is in uh, deep learning. Okay, while training it, it's called as training data. Okay, it's called as training data, the data that you give to the models and these are the three kind of models that you are having. Okay, these are the three deep learning models that you are having, three DL models, okay, three type of deep learning models that are there. This 50 question and answer is called as validation data. That is before testing the, uh, your before testing your models, before your final testing of the models, you have a validation data, okay, on which you test it to figure out, that is the pre-test, okay, you are validating whether the model is good enough or not, 
you want to validate it before sending it to the final test that it is good enough or not the final test okay the final test that google is having that is called as the testing data okay that is called as the testing data okay, where you take the final test of the uh, model okay now these three models farhan which performed poor okay he was not able to learn anything he was not able to memorize anything is called as an underfitted model okay this call as the underfitted model chatur who was just memorizing everything never understanding anything is called as an overfitted model and rancho who did good in everything is called as a good model okay ideal model or good model so these are all technical terms okay these are all technical terms okay you don't need if you have understood the example you just need to memorize these technical terms and this is called as overfitted model so chatur was an overfitted model if he memorizes everything farhan is an underfitted model if he has not learned anything he has not memorized anything rancho is like a good model he has understood the patterns in the data itself okay so these are some of the technical terms that happens right over there okay this is how these models work okay these are all how these models work are you guys a best fit model okay you can call this as a best fit model as well best fit model okay so whatever you need to learn it are you guys able to understand this okay are you guys able to understand this please do let me know are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys Was this example good enough for you guys? Okay, was this example good enough for you guys? Which la are the languages needed for game development? None of the above because if you want to get a job, focus upon either data science or full stack. see the point is uh, i never tell uh, anything that will like take you off from your career path okay there are no jobs in game development no good paying jobs in game development in india as of this particular point of time if you want to get a good job focus upon either data science or full stack that will be my suggestion if you want to learn game development as a hobby you can definitely learn javascript c sharp okay these are the two languages that i will suggest to you to start game development okay so this example is my one of the favorite examples because students uh, like to know about these examples itself okay so the next thing that we need to uh, understand is about loss function so how does these uh, things work okay uh, okay so let's assume that uh, we are having a particular uh, model okay we are having a model so let's uh, try to understand how does a model learn okay so we are having some data okay we are having some data at some particular point of time let's assume that the uh, data that we are having is a uh, square of numbers okay we are having square of numbers so we are having x and y as inputs sorry uh, let's assume that's have just one input itself okay now i need to take a eraser is it okay let's have the just one particular input okay let's have one particular input that is x and that input is 1 2 3 4 5 okay these are the uh, output uh, inputs that we are having okay we have just one input okay just one input that is there okay and these inputs this is the data that we are having so 1 2 3 4 5 okay now you are having a model okay you are having a particular model so this is your deep learning model you are putting in as the input as x and you are getting y as the output okay you are getting y as the output the output that you are getting okay the output that you are getting is let's assume 0.5 1 uh, uh, 1.5 2 and 2.5 these are the output that you get from the model itself okay your deep learning model that was there it took in x as an input okay and it give you y as the output this y is 0.5 1 1.5 2 and 2.5 this is the output that you were able to get from your uh, neural network okay you were able to get it from your neural network itself now what is the output that you required okay y dash is the output that you wanted from the neural network okay the output that you wanted from the neural network was 1 4 uh 9 or 2 4 16 and 25 
this is the output that you wanted from the neural network are you guys able to understand output you wanted output you got input are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please do let me know so now you want the output that you got okay in the first part the output that you got you want it to be as close as possible to the output that you wanted am i right guys the output that you got you want it to be as close as possible to the output that you wanted how to do that okay how to do that so what you will be doing is you will be uh propagating okay so once the entire like the input passed through the network okay the network computed something the network got you an output and according to that all the weights that are there okay w1 w2 whatever we discussed right over there for each of these uh neurons okay each of these inputs that are there to every single neuron the weights that are there that got formulated okay only then you can get the output okay the output that you got like is dependent upon these weights now what you will do is whatever output that you are getting okay you calculate the loss okay so what is the error right over there okay what is the error okay so your error is basically you are you will be subtracting both of these okay you'll be so how do you get an error okay at any point of time how to get calculate the error okay the error is the output that you uh, got minus the output that you wanted okay that will give you an error right over there okay that will give you an error right over there and that error you will calculate and then error you will propagate it back through the entire network okay this is the error update the weights so that uh, the error is as low as possible update the weights so that the error is as low as possible am i able to are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys update the error so that this particular um, like whatever update the weights so that this error is as low as possible now when you're calculating this error okay so you will be adding okay you'll be adding okay you'll be adding all these error ups all the errors that you are able to get on subtracting both of them that is how you are able to get the final error okay that is how you are able to get the final error so you'll be doing uh y minus y hat submission of y i minus y i hat okay where i is equals to one to i is equals to n that is the number of num, num, number of elements that are there in the data set that is how you are able to calculate the error your error is the summation of all the individual errors okay your final error is the summation of all the individual errors divided by n okay to get the average error that you are getting average error for the entire data set you will be adding okay you will be adding all the errors for each of these individual elements and dividing it by n to get the final error of your entire network okay you are getting yeah you are calculating the mean of the error itself but there's a huge problem in this okay there's a huge problem in this when you're calculating the error it is possible it is possible that some of the errors are positive and some of the errors are negative am i right guys it is possible for each of these data points some of the errors are positive and some of the errors are negative and when you are adding all these errors up the error might come to zero but is the error zero okay is the error zero actually each one of these errors that are there okay some of them might be positive some of them might be negative when you're adding all these errors up it is possible that whatever error that you're getting is coming to zero but actually it is not zero at any point of time so what we do is to make sure that we are not get like falling in for such a trap we use the squared loss or the absolute loss instead of computing the uh, error as yi minus yi uh, hat okay we calculate the error as yi minus y hat the square or mod of yi minus y hat okay so that when you are adding all these errors up errors are always positive the error is neg never negative the error is never negative the error are always positive are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys if the error are positive and negative some of the errors are positive some of the errors are negative if we try to add all the errors up the error might come to zero okay the error might come to zero itself and we don't want that 
So what we'll do is, so these all stuff you have already learned in mathematics when you were small, okay? You, if you want to make sure that the error, okay, of whatever evaluation that you're doing is not coming up to be zero. So you used to square it or you used to use the absolute of it. So that whenever you're adding, it's always positive. Your error is always positive at all times, okay? <laughs> So that is how you calculate the error of your network. Okay, you calculate the error of your network. And then what you do is you plot this error. So for, so for example, let us assume that this is a particular um, element. Okay, uh, we want to find the values. Okay, we want to find the values of W1 and W2. Okay, that is the weights. Okay, we want to like calculate the value of weights such that the error is as low as possible. Am I right or wrong guys? Please do let me know. We want to calculate the values of W1 and W2. Okay, that is the weights that are there for the entire network. Okay, we want to calculate the weights for the entire network in such a way that the error is as low as possible. Am I right or wrong guys? Please do let me know. This is what we want. We want the value of W1 and W2, that is the weights, so that the error is as low as possible. So what is the best way to do that? Okay, what is the best way to do that? First, plot the entire uh, weights versus error. Okay, so right over here, you have, will have your weights. Okay, so for example, at this particular position, if this is the value of W1 and W2, so let's assume W1 is one and W2 is zero, uh, two. Okay, so if these are the weights, then the error for your uh, model will be here. Okay, then uh, if the weight is W1 and W2, okay, the values of W1 and W2, you are fixing it up as, 10 and 20 okay then your error is right over here and you for every possible combination of w1 then w2 okay for every possible combination of w1 and w2 itself you will plot the error so here you are having the error okay what is the error right over here you will plot the error for all the possible values of w1 and w2 you will just put up w1 and w2 inside the entire equation you will check the uh, error that it is causing okay and then you will plot it up so it will give you some particular equation okay it will give you some particular equation itself and the d dy upon dx is equal to zero okay that will give you the er, the point okay the point where it is tangent okay that will give you the lowest error possible this point will give you the lowest error possible guys am i right or wrong please do let me know dy upon dx okay is equal to zero that will give us the derivative of this particular equation that you were able to form by plotting the values of w1 and w2 so you decide the values of w1 and w2 calculate the error according to that plot it up and then the derivative of that particular equation, whatever equation that you were able to get, the derivative of that particular equation, whenever it is equal to zero, that is the lowest, like that is the lowest error that you can get. And the value corresponding to that of W1 and W2, the value corresponding to that of W1 and W2, that is when the lowest error is possible. Am I right or wrong guys? Please do let me know. Am I right or wrong guys? Please let me know. So that is how this entire thing works. Okay. That is how this entire thing works. Am I, am, are you able to understand this? Please let me know guys. So this is the last topic. After this, I will be telling you guys the attendance. Do not worry, but are you guys able to understand up till here? Please let me know guys. Great. So, uh, now I'll be telling you guys the attendance for today. Give me a second. Is it required to learn deep learning to become a data scientist? Of course, Keshav. Of course, it is required. So no, this is not the sheet that I wanted. I think so. This is day five, right guys? This is day five. So once I've shown you the attendance QR, you will have 10 minutes to fill the attendance up. After that, the attendance thing will be closed. Okay. 
You'll have 10 minutes to fill the attendance link up. After that, the attendance will be closed, guys. Please do remember. Okay. Once I have shown you the uh, QR, you have 10 minutes to fill up the attendance form, guys. Is blockchain good to learn? Uh, no, not at all. Again, blockchain, you don't have any jobs available in India for freshers right now. Please do not waste your time learning blockchain. Okay, because for blockchain, cybersecurity, you need at least two to three years of experience in a company as a web developer, especially in backend of full stack web development. Only then you get job entry level job in uh, cybersecurity, ethical hacking and blockchain. So please do not, if you are a fresher, please do not uh, learn blockchain or cybersecurity, except if you want to learn it for your hobbies. For your hobbies, you can do whatever you want. Okay, you can learn how to play a guitar as well. That is totally up to you. From the perspective of placements, do not do that. So I've shown you the QR code at 838. At 848, the attendance link will be closed. Rishabh, uh, Android development, do not do that. First, learn Moonstack, but full stack uh, web development using Moonstack. Once you have learned that, that is, you have learned React, it becomes easy to, for you to create Android applications as well as iOS applications by using React Native. Okay, so that will be my suggestion. I'll be letting you guys know a little bit more about like how these companies are hiring and everything tomorrow. So you don't have to worry about that as well. Okay. So now that I've shown you guys the attendance QR. Okay. So I'll be ending the class right now. The attendance link will be closed at 848 guys. So thank you so much. Set an alarm for 848. Set my alarm as well. Okay. Thank you so much guys. Thank you. Thank you. Oh shit. Uh, I need to remove the, I think so. Question itself. Deleted it. It is saving and I saved all the changes. Now it's okay. Now I'll go back. I will close the stream as well. Thank you so much guys. Thank you.